Hi folks, we've got a knife that's got a custom screw head and it's both aesthetic and I think they call it like a safety or security screw. So the idea is you're not supposed to be able to unscrew this. Let's use Fusion 360 to show how we can easily create a CAD model and CAM tool pass and then we'll use the Tormach 440. We'll machine a little uh, adapter and we'll see if we can unscrew this thing. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. The tool you need to do this, your phone. Take a picture of our part and try to stay straight up over it. We need to measure the part. And I was having a hard time measuring this uh, diameter of the circle, just the nature of this uh, part. But I was able to get my calipers to kind of catch on that point there and come back to here and I'm getting Let's see, I got about 340 before, 338, yeah, perfect. Fusion 360, right click, new component. I'll rename that security tool. And come over here, see insert, I click the down arrow and choose attached canvas. The face, I'll pick this face, and I'll pick my image. Looks fine, and click OK. Expand my security tool, expand canvases, this is amazing. Right click on the file name of the photo and choose Calibrate. If you pause your mouse cursor, it'll pop up and it'll say, pick the first point on the canvas plane. So I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to pick right here. And then it says, pick the second point, say right here. And that was point three, four, ch double check. I'm not off by a digit. Yeah, point three, four, enter. That's the hard work. Is it? This is amazing. So now I will do C for circle. I'll sketch on this plane. I'll pick this approximate center point, which is pretty easy on this picture. And actually, it looks like it's not quite centered. So I'll say, to mention this at 0.46, and let's move it around. Okay. I actually want my tool to be slightly smaller because I don't want it to have any problems uh, with interference from the knife handle. Uh, you want to maximize the diameter so that you have as much contact engagement between the tool and this fastener, but you know, running it a, just a hair under will be fine. And so you can see in, uh, in the photo, right here I've got a shadow. So the more time you spend on the photo, eliminating shadows or the other trick if you've got a DSLR or a higher quality camera is to put the camera as far away as possible and zoom in as much as your camera has it with optical zoom, not digital zoom. What that does is it narrows that, um, what do they call it, profiling or, or perspective distortion because if you think about it, if you're looking at something really close, your angles are going outwards. If you go really far away and look in, it's more of a head-on look. I still think we'll be fine for this tool, but it is a good trick. Sketch, arc, three-point arc. I'll click right here. Oops, that was the plane, sorry. Click right here, here, and here. And same thing, you know, I might wanna bend that out just a hair. Oops. Okay, so see how I, when I just did that, the blue circle moved? Uh, so let's click on that circle. Actually, the center point should work, and I will say fix. And that turns the circle green, so now I've got the freedom to move around here and not worry as much about that it bumps on me. Okay, that looks good. Right, uh, sketch, arc, three-point arc.
and the same thing. So you could do one and pattern it, um, sticking out loud, but I'm okay with this. A lot of ways to skin the cat here. This is still really cool though. Okay, let's pull this point out just a hair. So again, I'd rather have the tool just a hair loose than too tight. Cool, looks good to me. E for extrude. One, two, three. Extrude these up. Now this is interesting. This is gonna create three bodies. I don't know that I care. Um, click OK. Because a body, um, you can't have one body with two things that don't touch each other. So, but what we're going to do to make the actual screw is C for circle, you know, on this plane, um, right here, E for extrude, and bring this up. Click OK. I can hide my canvas now. Turn the light bulb off, and there's what I need my tool to look like. Cool. A couple quick tweaks. I don't need this to be quite so deep of an extrusion. So let's see, only uh, 0.05 is good enough. I don't want these sharp corners. So we'll do a fillet. One, two, oops. Two, three, four, five, six. Zero, two, one, cool. And instead of having it be this long, We'll say 0.5, and let's throw a hex on it. Sketch, polygon, circumscribed on this plane. Center it, 0.25. Oops, that was 0.25, there we go. And I'll extrude that up like so. That's our little tool. Switch into cam, new setup. It'll be milling, fine. It's defaulted to this way, so we'll do the hex first. Um, fixed sized cylinder, we'll say half an inch. 2D adaptive. Tool 31, quarter inch end mill. Five optimal load. We'll leave five thou radial stock on the side. Okay, and I'll just do a right click, create derived, two D, contour. Click OK. It automatically calculates my. Uh, <laughs> I've got a height error. Can't figure out how to get rid of this. Um, my default is eighty thou below. Even when I fix it and right click and make all default. Anyways. That's my problem. Cool. That does the effect side. Next setup. Just flip the stem and stock box point of here. Everybody see how I did that? I'll do it again, actually. So new setup. I want to flip the X to go the other way. So I'll click the arrow tip. And then I need to pick the other face. So if I choose box point. That lets me come up here and pick this guy. Cool. Click OK. And you know what? We'll face it real quick. I'm just going to face it with a tool 31. Not what I normally do, but it's fine for this. 2D adaptive clearing. So I don't like picking faces with, with the um, adaptive operations. Let's click OK and see what happens. Um, that even gives us an error. Okay. So the better way to do it is to pick, uh, especially in the, oh, you know what? In the 2D, the better way to do it would be to pick geometry. So you could pick, you know, for instance, these lines. If you notice, it's not getting the full contour. We'd still get a, a tool path and, and we could make it work. Um, this is one reason why it's a lot of times just better to use the 3D tool path. There's the wrong tool here. So instead, 3D adaptive, pick my tool. And here I don't have to do much of anything. Set my optimal load. 
max depth, LD5 thou radial, no axial. And bottom height is this right here. Minimum cutting radius. There we go. Perfect. So it can't get through there. Is that because two? There it goes. So see that by reducing the minimum cutting radius, I let it basically take smaller adaptive passes and get in there. Let's see how long this takes. I know it looks like a lot, but I bet you it's a pretty quick tool path. Yeah, minute 23, awesome. And we're entering on the side, so I don't need to worry about the fact that it could be a plunge. Perfect 2D contour. Um, I'm gonna pick One, two, there, there we go. It's weird why those aren't linking together naturally. It's like the, that's the full, that one did that on the full. Same tool, click OK. Should be good to go. Let's grab some material and head over the machine. We're centered over our part. I'm just gonna jog down and set the Z zero this way. We're making the geom we're making a new plane and um, that's plenty to clear off, so let's rock and roll. Sweet, we're done with that half. Before we take it out, actually, let's make sure it fits. Perfect, fits our tool just fine. All right, flip it around. That'll repeat plenty good enough for the task at hand. You can, your fingers are a good indicator. That's actually a pretty darn close fit. We didn't end up facing all that off the last time, so let's uh, go a hair lower this time. Zero that out. Load up our second code. Now we'll switch to the 1 16th, finish up. Isn't that a thing of beauty? God, that's beautiful. It's just so funny, a 1 16th inch tool, and it, no problem at all, like no problem. 10K RPMs really help, and the tool path. You guys saw last week's uh, injection mold video, same thing. These small tools are, are um, use them, you know, use them. And turn a little bit of liquid on here. There we go. The one thing with these fog busters or any MQL, minimum, minimal quantity lubrication is if the, um, if it's not aimed correctly, you might as well, you know, you miss by a quarter inch, you miss by a mile. And here's our 2D contour cleanup. We're, knock on wood, if this fits, we're done. How awesome is that? You know, we normally, things slow down because of videos and I, I'm always running around, but even on this one, I think it was two hours 
start to finish. But I mean, again, we had an hour of steel delivery come. I've got another job running on the 1100, uh, answering emails. I got two phone calls. I got a prototype to, to, for a guy that I'm texting on. I, you know, it would be totally, I don't think I've ever once focused on just one thing. Um, but, you know, to film this and still get it done in that sort of time, awesome. See if she fits. So. Oh yeah, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's already working, it's already loosening up. Okay, let's take it out and take a closer look. Here she is. I wish I had chamfered those, darn it. Um, I should have chamfered them in the machine, but I've really gotten to like these Noga scrapers. I'd never used these before and they make um, stuff like this. Honestly, it's still not easy to deburr, but it's a lot better, easier than, um, you know, your traditional deburring tool. So uh, these are pretty cheap too, 15, 20 bucks. I don't know, just, I really, you know, you know when you feel like you need a tool and you didn't know if it existed and then you find it and you're like, oh my God, where has this been all my life? Um, these are great. Because, you know, we don't want sharp edges deburring um, or sh marking up that knife. You just got to go so soft that I gouge in. You could also hit this on a scotch bright wheel. Uh, but check it out. I, ma I made our hex end so we could use it in a tool. I don't even think we need to. Yeah. Take a look. Oh my God, it's actually a really good fit. We'll put it in the tool just for kicks, because why not? So when I tighten this down, oh, that's awesome. There's almost no wiggle in the tool. Isn't that cool? I have no idea. The customer said do whatever we need to with the knife. I have no idea if this is an expensive knife or not. Um, obviously treat it like it is. So yeah. There's our custom security screw, and here is our little adapter, quick tool for it. How about that, folks? Hope you guys enjoyed, hope you learned something. Thanks for the likes and the shares. See you next Wednesday.